Hi, Joe Alton, MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the greatly expanded fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook and designer of quality medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. A pandemic-weary nation probably wants to hear about a viral outbreak as much as they'd like a hole in the head, but as a medical preparedness advocate, I've got to tell you when it occurs. On January 7, 2020, I reported on 60 cases of pneumonia in a place called Wuhan, China. At the time, nobody had yet died from the unknown virus, and some wondered why I bothered writing about it. 700 million cases and 7 million deaths later? Well, so it's probably good to know about these things as early as possible, just in case. Recently, the African countries of Equatorial Guinea and Tanzania have reported cases of a hemorrhagic fever known as Marburg virus. So far, 14 cases have been confirmed in Guinea with 10 deaths and one recovery. There are also 20 probable cases in the country, all of whom died. In Tanzania on the opposite coast, eight cases with five deaths have been documented. Strangely, the CDC always seems to be a little behind when it comes to issuing warnings about these things. This delay is sometimes a reason why containment of highly contagious viruses is so difficult. The last hemorrhagic virus to reach major epidemic status was Ebola in 2014, with 28,000 total cases and 11,000 deaths. Marburg is similar to Ebola in many ways. Both are viruses in the Phyloviridae family. Like Ebola, Marburg causes a disease that severely impacts various organs of humans and non-human primates in a very short period of time. Both are what we call zoonotic infections, which means that they can be passed from animals to people. Even the original animal source of the virus, called the reservoir, is similar. Fruit bats. Bats again. Neither virus seems to sicken the bats, but both cause significant numbers of deaths among their human and primate victims. Like Ebola, it's thought that humans may have first contracted the Marburg virus from undercooked bush meat. The Marburg virus was first identified in 1967 in, of all places, German and then Yugoslavian labs after several simultaneous cases were linked to infected laboratory monkeys. Unlike the situation with COVID-19 and the Wuhan Virology Lab, however, the fact that Marburg was first identified in a lab doesn't mean it was manufactured or otherwise developed there. It turns out that laboratory monkeys imported from Guinea arrived already infected with the previously unknown disease, which spread to lab workers. In the original outbreak, 31 people were infected with seven deaths before the virus was contained. The very contagious Marburg virus can be transmitted whenever there's contact with the bodily fluids, bedding, clothing, and other personal items of an infected person. The symptoms start, often suddenly, between 2 and 21 days after exposure, averaging around 5 to 10. Infected individuals experience high fever, headaches, muscle aches, abdominal pain, and watery diarrhea at first, followed several days later by organ failure and bleeding in the urine, bowel movements from the nose, gums, ears, eyes, or under the skin. Blood loss is often severe enough to cause shock leading to death. In fatal cases, this occurs around day eight or nine. Those most at risk of getting infected with Marburg are people who have direct contact with infected family members and, of course, healthcare workers. One contributing factor to Marburg's spread is the custom in parts of Africa of having the family wash the body of the deceased before burial. In previous outbreaks, case fatality rates have ranged from 24 to 88%, depending on the strain of the virus involved and the availability of medical treatment, such as intravenous fluids and blood products. Keeping the victims hydrated seems to decrease the death rate, as it did with Ebola. Oxygen and blood transfusion also help. Patients with suspected Marburg virus disease should be placed in isolation, and those caring for them should wear serious personal protection gear like gowns, aprons, gloves, face shields, and masks. No vaccine has yet been developed against the Marburg virus, although some are in development. So it has been suggested that due to its close relation to Ebola, that existing Ebola vaccines may actually be effective against it. We'll have to see. The World Health Organization, WHO, considers the risk of an epidemic to be very high for Guinea and Tanzania, but previous outbreaks of Marburg, including one in Ghana last year, have all petered out on their own. I haven't seen many updates on the number of cases, so I can't say if this one will but the countries involved and their neighbors are initiating containment protocols and other methods of identifying and isolating those at risk. The chance for worldwide spread is considered to be very low. Still, we should all be aware of Marburg, even if it's still beyond the horizon. Let's hope it stays there.
This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, learn more about off-grid medical topics in the award-winning fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook and get your family medically prepared with quality kits and individual supplies from our entire line at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.